Hi everybody, let's keep going in this video looking at the micro and macro effects of a big topic area, income inequality. Specifically, looking at the micro and macro causes and consequences of income inequality, as well as the micro and macro policies to try and reduce inequality. Income inequality is a massive topic area, could easily be a feature of paper three this year, so we need to prepare well. This video is very thorough in that regard. But note that this video is one of many where I look at micro and macro effects of various topic areas in the course. You find those videos in my revision for paper three playlist. They're all there for you. You need to be watching those to make sure you're ready with micro and macro effects of all major topic areas in the course to then smash paper three. So this video is great. And yes, further videos to come, fantastic. Watch them all, but make sure you've watched those other videos as well for perfect preparation. So let's dive in now with micro and macro causes of income inequality. Starting with micro causes, we're looking at direct demand and or supply determinants in the labor market. For example, number one, differences in education. Naturally, those who are more educated will be earning higher incomes than those who are less educated, but also age, older workers with more experience, more skills, uh, greater acumen, greater human capital will be earning more than younger workers without that kind of work experience, without that skill set that's highly desirable. So these are both very strong demand factors in the labor market. Now we can look at specifically the production processes of businesses across the economy. If there is highly capital intensive production, capital owners see the high income, there isn't that transfer to workers in the economy. Technology, a major driver of inequality in two ways. Technology advancement can highly complement the skills of high income earners already and just make their incomes even greater. Whereas technology advancement can replace the jobs um, of lower income workers. Automation of jobs that way can drive significantly increases in inequality. Those who work on flexible labor contracts, think of those who are on part-time contracts, those who work in the gig economy, those on zero hours contracts often are earning significantly lower incomes and those are more consistent full-time contracts. And inheritance, of course, another driver of inequality. They're all on the micro side, rooted in the labor market. When we move to macro causes, we're looking at economy-wide drivers of inequality. For example, is there one sector that's highly dominant for economic growth in an economy? That's the case when there is economic growth, when that sector is doing well, those who work in that sector will see higher incomes, but you don't see a transfer to other people in the population. You don't see other people who are in work seeing the same kind of income increase, a driver of inequality. We expect in recession for unemployment to rise for there to be an increase in poverty, but often in recession, what happens is those on lower skills, those on lower incomes and young workers tend to lose their jobs the fastest because they're very easy to re-employ for businesses and they're not a major loss. They're not as valuable as a resource, as high income, high skilled workers are. They're very valuable for a firm. So even in recession, firms don't want to let go of their most valuable high skill workers. They'd rather let go of youngsters, those on lower skills, those on lower incomes. They're very easy to get back hence a driver of inequality. Globalization in all three ways, whether from greater trade, freer trade, whether it's inward FDI, whether it's immigration, all three can give you a link to rising inequality. On the trade side, look at it two ways. Maybe um, a country loses their comparative advantage. Countries abroad are now more efficient producers. That can mean deindustrialization in a home country that can increase unemployment, link you to inequality. But also with greater international trade, greater fierce competition, firms now may look to cut their costs dramatically. One way to do that is by lowering wages or by reducing the size of workforces. Normally that is by making low income workers, lower skilled workers redundant, a driver of inequality. When it comes to inward FDI, you can worry about highly profit motivated firms cutting costs by reducing wages or forcing workers onto flexible labor market contracts and immigration. Higher supply of labor, especially in lower uh, skilled professions, can reduce wages and drive up inequality. And of course, the impact of government policies or a lack of government policies to redistribute income linked to that corrupt governments who don't implement those policies to promote greater equity and macro cause of inequality for you. Let's move now to consequences of income inequality. On the micro side, your social costs. Think when there is significant income inequality, we expect there to be a rise in homelessness and poverty. We expect there to be more riots and protests on the street, more reliance on healthcare services, uh, greater crime rates. The issue here though, is the burden on the taxpayer, your negative externalities because of all those issues, that makes it a micro consequence there if you go down that route. 
but then you've got three very strong incentives highly rooted in the labor market. If there is some inequality, some strong incentives are promoted. For example, the incentives for individuals to be educated, knowing that if you're educated, you're going to be earning more than those who aren't educated. Good news for you, yes, and your living standards, but also good news for employers who see higher productivity, who see lower cost of production too. There is a very strong incentive for entrepreneurship. People take a risk by starting up a business, translating an idea into an actual product. Um, the good news is then if you're successful as an entrepreneur, of course, your income rises, you receive an income that's significantly greater than others who haven't taken such a risk. But also then with brand new innovation, brand new innovative goods and services, consumers benefit, other firms benefit. You've also got a very strong incentive to work because with some inequality, there is always going to be good paying work out there that beats a life on welfare. Again, good news for the individual that gets off welfare and sees a rise in their living standards. When it comes to macro consequences, you can worry about the negative impact of government finances of high income inequality with greater government spending on benefits, greater government spending on social costs that come with high income inequality, but also lower tax revenues that might be uh, being experienced as well. And our budget deficits then rise, the national debt increases year on year on year, the concerns that come with that. You can worry about the living standards for those on lower incomes, of course you can. Here's something more novel. Both of these points take you to financial sector instability. How with high income inequality, those on high incomes will look to invest their money seeking high yields. For example, investing their money in property or putting it into the stock market. If that's not sustainable, that could lead to bubbles forming. Stock market bubbles, uh, property bubbles, housing market bubbles. If there is a crash in any of those markets, that could lead to financial sector instability, banking sector issues. Whereas for those on low incomes to supplement their living standards or to bolster their living standards, they may be tempted to borrow money, which again is dangerous, a threat to the banking sector, potentially resulting in instability there. Uh, interesting points there. And you can worry about very high income inequality acting as a constraint to growth. Uh, those with high incomes tend to have a high marginal propensity to save. Those with a high marginal propensity to consume in the economy are those on lower incomes. So by them not earning much more or not seeing the same rate of income growth as those on higher incomes, you're restricting purchasing power, consumption increases in aggregate demand, but also for those on low incomes who maybe struggle to access health and education, that's a constraint to potential growth increases in LRAS there. And let's finish now by looking at micro macro policies to reduce inequality. Well, on the micro side, we look at direct regulations like minimum wage and maximum wages, regulations that impact very strongly within the labor market. These are wage controls, aren't they? So very clearly micro policies. On the macro side, we're thinking more really under the heading of fiscal policy. So progressive income taxation, implement it, or make an existing system even more progressive. Government spending on benefits, welfare, that is transfer payments. Government spending on education and health, of course. Uh, but even something more novel, like universal basic income, it's a big form of government spending, so it is a macro policy right there, but something a bit different to consider. So there you go, guys. That's the major topic area of inequality done, but within the heading or underneath the heading of micro and macro effects. Your job is to make sure you're doing this for a wide variety of topic areas that could feature in paper three. But that's where my revision for paper three playlist is amazing. Loads of videos in there that you need to watch that basically does this for all those other topic areas for you. Get practicing like that. You're set for paper three. So thank you for watching this video. Look out for more releases coming soon. Can't wait to see you in those videos. Thanks for watching, guys. Mm -hmm.